Good. So we are done with this background. Now we can really do the algorithm. We will do this using one example, right? We will trace the qubit one by one, and we already know how to do this. Do this, and we are very good in this. Okay, let's start. For example, we still use the twenty-one as an example in the numeric, but let's say the problem size equal to n. Right? I have a number. I ask you to factorize. 21 is easy, but what if it is 100 digit? 100 digit of decimal number. There's a big number. That is the problem size. If you will not want to factorize it, you really need to go through from, start from one all the way to square root that digit to find out what are the prime factor, right? Prime factorization. So we need to have n qubit no I, I should not say n qubit I will I, I need to need to have an n such that 2 to the power n is larger or equal to capital N okay for example if n equal to 21 that is the one we are trying to factorize right what is the minimum n that i can have five because two to the power five equals to 32 which is larger than n right if you use four you only have 16 it's not enough for you to find the answer because the period can be larger than 16. The period is smaller than 21. We know that, right? You can make it larger also, 6, but it's a waste of resources, okay? So that is the meaning of n, small n. But in this algorithm, right, in Shaw's algorithm, how many qubits do we need based on the figure? Free n, yes, which is? 15 in this case, right? So you start seeing that it's really useless for small number, right? Just to vaporize 21, I need 15 qubit, right? But however, when you go to really, really large number, then you will see the benefit. Yeah. Go through the algorithm, then you know why we need to end. Yeah, that's good, right? The whole algorithm, let, let me say something. Yeah, good point. Why we need to end? If we look at the algorithm, you will see why very soon. But you do see there are two blocks, right? One block is 2n. This 2n goes through superposition and quantum Fourier transform. Another n is more like an auxiliary uh, qubit, but this is useful. We will see why, okay? So let's start. I start with the first wave function, which is the input z0. What is this? Can someone... Tell me how to write out this wave function, this state. Wave function is the state, right? How do I write it? What is the first? Well, it means this part, the input. What is that? It's all zero. I initial by zero. You're right, right? You can say zero tensor product for how many zero? 3n, right? So it is just, but I'm going to simplify it. I just say this is 2n tensor product n. Because the n is the least significant bit. You can combine them, doesn't matter, right? But I separate them because I have used later. And of course, I'm very good in this already. I will just really make it simple, right? Why I want to put the tensor product, make it so complicated. We all know what it is about now. Is there any question? It's too dark, I cannot see you. Your face. <laughs> it's okay? Good. Then, how, how, after the harder market, what happened? First of all, maybe just as a practice, right? we can, should write down the gates that applies to C1. What is the gates? How do we write the gate? What is the symbol for the gate?
I, I'm just saying that in terms of equation, maybe my question is not clear. C1 equal to what times C0? This is C1. Yeah. You got what? How do my gate? <clears throat> Oh, no, no. Hadama gates, I, I, you don't spell out because we have too many, right? We have N, just a symbol. But how do you write it? Hadama gates, that's it? Huh? Yeah, tensor product with what? I. Which is also N qubit, right? The point is here, you want to realize that this one only apply to the First, 2n qubit. I is applied to the last n qubit, right? So this is, of course, I can just write it as plus. But however, do you remember the equation for Hadamard gate? Uh, may, let me just make it really clear, right? What we are saying is this. Right? Agree? Between them are tensor products, right? And this is just regular multiplication. Now this can get confusing to you, but now you should not get confused because you see this is matrix, this is vector, it must be regular multiplication. And then I have a vector and another vector, it is a tensor product because both are cat, right? I skip all the tensor product, but I hope that you, 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 you understand this is what I mean, right? Hadama gate tensor product 2n time applied to zero tensor product 2n time. The whole thing, tensor product with i, right? n time applied to zero n time. So, okay. This whole thing is just this, right? Very clear. What happens when you apply i to zero? does not change, right? Identity gate. How about you apply the Hadama gate? You can say it becomes plus, but if you remember, this is the equation. Equals to one over two to the power two n divided by two, because now it is two n qubit. Summation, x equal to zero to the power two to the power two n minus one, because it has 2n qubit times what? Do you remember? x, right? Now I put here 2n. I just want to remind you it is a 2n qubit. And then the whole thing, I also put the n down. I remind you this is a n qubit zero. Now, the most important thing is here. If you forgot, you just remember that's what we derived earlier when we talked about Hadamard gates, n qubit Hadamard gates. When you apply a Hadamard gate to n qubit zero, you will get a superposition of all the bases from zero to two to the power of capital N minus one. Remember, right? If you have a two qubit, you do superposition of zero plus one plus two plus three, and then you have the normalized coefficient. Uh, this one, assume it is in your cheat sheet and you remember. Yeah. Why this is n for zero? Where? This one? Oh, here I'm talking about the tensor, n tensor qubit of zero. But here I'm suggesting that this is a n qubit zero. So, so here I'm saying this is just like when I write, when I write this, right? Like this is just a notation, right? You have n of them. And I write this, what I'm saying is, you have n of zero. And they are the same. Is that okay? And that's why here when I say x to the uh, subscript 2n, is x can be very, any value, right? It can be zero, one, all the way to two to the power two n minus one but it is 2n qubit. Some of you get confused, right? For example, when I say 5 equal to 3, what do I mean? 
Five is what? Four plus one, right? One, zero, one. Is this four plus one? Yeah. I can also say five with six qubit. What is that? Zero, 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 one, zero, one. Okay, here I just to help you remember that this is a 2n qubit. And this is n. Is that okay? Is that okay? Now? Or still have question? Yeah. No. No, this is from here. This is from here. Okay, you still have free NQ bit. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Right, so we are playing with this here because identity times zero I just put here, right? So that is the beauty or confusing of this uh, equation. You can take it out also. So after C1, we see superposition. Then, what we need to do next is Z2. Z2 is what? How do we write the gate? It's a quantum Fourier transform of how many qubits? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's after the oracle, I'm sorry. UF C1, right? Now, do you still remember what does Oracle do? It keep the first n qubit unchanged, as I show here. Right? Because I fit the 2n into the x position. Right? And the last qubit becomes y exclusive f of x, right? So that is what it will do. First, I just copy everything. This are just superposition, linear combination. So I really don't need to worry. Now I have the basis state. X and zero are the basis state. X does not change because it's quantum oracle. What changed to the last one? What is this? What is the last n qubit now? Based on the definition of the oracle. What is y in this case? What is y? Zero. Yeah. And then y, x or f of x, right? So what is x? Zero exclusive f of x. What is zero exclusive of f of x? f of x. Anything exclusive with zero is itself. So what this oracle does is to put the function into the basis of the last n qubit. Okay? And just remind you, what is f of x? Where f of x equal to a to the power x modulus n. Okay, we assume we have this oracle. Make sense? Any questions? So that's coming from what's labeled MSB here. Why would it be MS? F of X is where? Where is that? So the X. X is MSB, Y is LSB. Right? Well, that's, that, that's F of X 44. It's linked to the AX on L. No, F of X is a function and that function was defined as this for this problem. This is the function we're trying to deal with, right? We're doing the Schwarz algorithm to find the period. 
That is the f of x we are dealing with. Okay, maybe I was not clear, right? We, our goal is to find the period of the function. And how do we use the quantum computer to solve any problem? The oracle must be linked to that function, right? Like what we do for Deutsch, for Grufus algorithm. So in Shaw's algorithm, this is the function we're interested in. So we need a oracle that can implement this function. Yeah, good. So actually, I actually have too many space. Uh, I should not put C1 here. I should put C2, right? I just show you that it is this. F of X, right? The only difference is F of X. So now I need to do C3. which is the quantum Fourier transform. So again, like what I did earlier, I have quantum Fourier transform, which is two n qubit, right? Apply and then tensor product with the n qubit identity gate applied to C2. And this is going to be messy now because quantum Fourier transform is going to introduce another layer of summation, uh, of summation, right? So let's first, before I write down the quantum Fourier, I write down everything clearly. The original one, I have two to the power n, I have summation x equal to zero, two to the power n, two n minus one. And then f of x is not going to change because this is, apply with an identity gate. What I really need to do is to apply this one, uqft 2n on x. You see what I mean? I apply this quantum Fourier transform to C2, and this is C2. Right, then due to linearity, I take out the summation and all this factor. And this f of x does not get a factor because it's last n qubit. What I'm really doing is apply qft to x to each of these states, right? And I think maybe you also forgot, but do you remember when you apply quantum Fourier transform to a basis state, what is the result? It's the another superposition, right? So it is one over again two to the power n, and I'm going to pick a lump, uh, variable called k, two to the power two n minus one. This is just copying the equation we have in the quantum Fourier transform. Okay. And it is weighted by the nth root of unity by kx. And then this is k. And again, it's 2, right? Yeah. This will be hard to describe the words, right? Because you essentially have a superposition of a superposition. Yeah, and then we're going to do destructive interference. Yeah, we are. That is the purpose. Yeah, it is difficult to see, but uh, just showing you that you do have superposition by two times. It's right. Yeah, yeah. The first thing, the first superposition is because I want to calculate all of them in parallel. That is the first superposition. Second one is not real superposition. It's a superposition, but the goal is to do constructive and destructive interference. Yeah, you, 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 if you skip the first Hadamard gate, you still get it, but you only calculate one of them at a time, right? You need to input instead of zero, input each basis at a time. Yeah, that, that is a good point, yeah. So is that okay, everyone, with this one? Uh, if you keep, feel confused because of this equation, you need to trust me now, because that's what we learned earlier. When you apply the quantum Fourier transform to the basis state, it becomes another superposition. 
So for each x, it becomes a superposition of all the k weighted by omega to the power negative kx. Okay, so let me rewrite this. And now it becomes 2 to the power 2n because this I have 1 over 2n two times. And I'm going to just write summation x equal to 0, 2 to the power 2n minus 1, summation k equal to 0, 2 to the power 2n minus 1, omega negative kx, and then I have k, 2n, f of x, n, right? Which is the same as above, but I just take away this 2n. Okay, yeah. Yeah. What is omega? If you know what you're talking about, you even don't need to draw this because you have the figure here. But if you don't have the figure, you give this to someone, uh, they still know based on this, but it's better to say this is 2n qubit. Yeah, just this is only labeled for clarity. Okay, yeah. Okay. Let me see, I maybe go to another slide that will be better, right? Oh, I, hold on, what should I do now? Okay, so uh, now I want to ask you, after C3, right? After C3, I do a measurement. Measure the NLSB, right? The first me the measurement is to measure the last NSB, right? What would you get? Can you tell me? When I measure it, which one am I measuring? Are you, am I measuring this or this? I measure the f of x, right? So it will collapse, right? I only will measure one of them, right? So it will collapse to one of the f of x, right? One of them. Now, that is the point. f of x is what? Periodic function. So, when I measure it, many x, many x, give the same f of x. Okay? For example, in our case, we have what? f of x equals to 1, 11, 16, 8, 4, 2. That is the period we found earlier for 21. Right? 1, 11, 16, 8, 4, 2. And then 1, 11, 16, 8, 4, 2. When you keep doing this, right? This is f of x. Right? If I get, for example, 11. x can be equal to 1. It can be equal to 7. It can be equal to 13. And all the way up. Do you see this? Yeah. Are you? You are not. Are you asking question? No. Okay. Just stretching. Do you see this? This one is the basis vector, and this basis vector is defined by f of x, right? But I only have in this case I only have six possible f of x. But many x can give this f of x. For example, if I collapse to 11, if I do the measurement, it gives me 11, right? It means this. It gives me 11. The x can be 1, can be 3, can be 13. Make sense? So when I this collapse, it doesn't mean that only one of the x will left over. Many x will left over. Right? If this were just x, I measure x equal to 11, then I only have one x, right? But now, because this is f of x, I got 11. 
x equal to 1, x equal to 7, x equal to 13, x equal to 19, all the way up will, leave, will be left over. Hmm? Yeah. Let me ask you, when I match 11, what is f of x? 11. 11. What can give you 11? What x can give you 11? You don't need the equation, right? I already told you the possible answer is 1, 11, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, and then keep repeating. Yeah, what is the x that can give you 11? If it is 0, if it is 1, it gives you 11, right? When x is equal to 1, it gives you 11. Exactly, exactly, yeah. The first is x equal to 1 gives you 11, and because it's periodic, then x equal to 7 gives you 11, x equal to 13 gives you 11. Make sense? Okay. So, when it collapses, what do we really get? Here, wow, I do not have the right slice. Uh, I write too much. How can I expect that I can finish? Oh, here, here, I still have one page. Yeah, so, right, so from here, right, so when it collapses, right, so assume I get f of x zero, right? Then x zero, x zero plus r, x zero plus two r, x zero plus three r, or give f of x zero, right? Because of this, then after measure, after the measurement, it collapses to collapse. Says to this summation k equal to zero. 2 to the power 2n minus 1, because the k is irrelevant, k is related to the first n qubit, so I did not measure it, everything is there. Only this one, x is going to collapse. I will get this, summation, x equal to x0, x equal to x0 plus r, all the way, for all the x, e to the power, not e. Omega to the power negative kx, and then my k is still there, nothing happened, but now I only have f of x naught. Right? This one is a constant because I do get f of x naught. This is what I measure, right? But then for the x, I only have x0, 0, keep going, x0, x0 plus 1, x0, x0 plus 2, etc. Is that okay? The same summation is originally, it was starting from x, x0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 2 to the power n minus 1. Now your x only has x0, x0 plus 1, x0 plus 2, uh, no, x0 plus r, x0 plus 2r, x0 plus 3r. No, yeah, this is just a symbol. Just mean that it's only this, right? So basically what I'm saying, original, you are submitting x from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now you only have 6, 0, 1, x0, 1, x0, 7, x0, 13. Okay? Now, uh, I don't want to stop you, uh, hold you. So it's time's up. You, uh, we can continue. I'm almost done with the algorithm. We can continue on Wednesday. Yeah, but let me know if you have questions. Ah, now, now I can give you an example. In this summation, you actually have omega negative k zero k 
f of 0 plus omega negative k 1 k times 1 k f of 1 plus omega negative k 2 times 2 k f of 2 is this okay this is what it mean right but however i, I should write more can you see it i also have omega negative k uh, 6, right? K F of 6, right? So if I do the measurement, I get 1, if I get 1. This is equal to 1, correct? F of 0. This is also equal to 1. F of 6 is also equal to 1. Because it is periodic f of 6 is equal to 1. So if I get 1, what do we have? This term will be gone. Because I do the measurement, it collapses to 1, right? This term will be gone. What a left. All the these are 1, right? But the x is not necessary. It's not just one value. It can be 0. It can be 6. It can be 13. Uh, 12. It can be 18. So isn't that when I do the measurement, I will get a bunch of terms. Unlike if this is not f of 0, if this is just x, 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 x. I measure x I, and I get 1. Only this term will survive. Right? Because this is 6. If this were not f of 6, right? If this is 6. Can you see it? Do you get it? X. If this is not f of x, but x. Let me write this down again, right? I, I need to erase this box later, otherwise you cannot study. What if the function is this? If I do the measurement, I get zero. What will I get on this top? What will I get? What is left over when I get zero when I do the measurement? W minus K, uh, Only this one left, right? All the all these are gone, right? You won't get six, right? No, no, no. This is a fake one. This is a fake one. If I have a function like this, I'm asking you, if I have a function like this and I get zero, what do I, what is left over? Just a zero, right? But here, it is not x, it is f of zero. If I get one, what is left over? This is one. This is also one. f of 12 is also one. f of 18 is also one. So what is left over? Many terms. Yeah, superposition of all these terms. That is what I'm trying to say. Okay? Is that clear? So I, I will go to erase the top one because this is a wrong one. Yeah. Yeah, based on the last example. Here we... we, we Where did you put it? Where did you put it? Oh, here. It's in the Oracle. Yeah. The f of x is all here. So you have to put in the you just have to put in the Yeah, the Oracle is supposed to know know everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is but the Oracle. So then this this work will if you look at the function that we were talking about for this, is 
slide with one, but uh, it's not as yoke as this one. So how do you code that in an Oracle? Well, that's another matter, right? They, they have some uh, method to do that. Maybe there's some uh, uh, rule that you can build a gate and or, or you hope that there's a physical system existing there, yeah. So we are not going into this there because I don't know. So don't give it the exam. Hmm? No, exam is just you find the oracle yourself. Yeah, you find oracle that can implement this. Yeah, but for each problem it's going to be difficult. Yeah. So okay. So that's why I may get f of x0 but this as long as for any value x0, x0 plus 1, x0 plus 2r, x0 plus 3r, they all give, give me the same f x of 0. That's what I just told you, right? Here the x0 may be equal to 0, right? 0 plus 6, 0 plus 12, 0 plus 18. They will all let, be left over, right? And that's why this equation collapses to this one. You only have in this summation term, you only have uh, x0, 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 x0 plus 1, x0, x0 plus 2r, not 1, I keep saying 1, x0 plus r, right? You only have this left, right? Okay, now I lost my cheat sheet. Any questions? Those things, cyborg, just maybe just to understand what's happening with that. Mm -hmm. Say again. Well, I have not reached cyborg yet. I'm explaining to you uh, what what it is. Uh, cyborg is C four is after the first measurement. Yeah. But I'm trying to tell you this is the what you get, right? This is C four. I forgot to write it. Okay, and now I also ignore the lombolization constant because after measurement, you need to relombolize. I don't want to go into those troubles, okay? So what is this? This one I can rewrite as summation k equal to zero to the to the to the power two n minus oh, sorry, summation k equal to zero to the power 2n minus 1. Now here you see that I'm actually summing something, uh, summing something that is from 0, 1, 2, 3. But it is x0 plus 1 times r, x0 plus 2 times r, x0 plus 3 times r, right? So I definitely can write this as summation. I just call it y. Okay? From 0 to some numbers. Okay? But this one, I then need to write this as omega negative k x0 plus y r okay because x original x is x0 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 plus r x0 plus 2 r now i make it into y as the summation so it is still x0 plus 0 r x0 plus 1 r x0 plus, x0 plus 2 r right i just rewrite it and then i have this one i just write the rest And with this, I can further write it as summation k equal to zero. Everything is the same, nothing special. Summation y, I just put y. I know it is summing some integer y starting from zero. And now I can write it as omega negative kx zero, omega negative ky r, and then k and then f of x0. Okay? Now I need to see where... Show that when you do this uh, 
C4, right? Uh, we, you collapse to this uh, superposition, which is separated by the period. And then I can just rewrite this as this term, right? So in summary, C4 is this term now. You have summation of K. You also have summation of Y. But uh, this is natural number, right? Uh, that is a result because of the period of the function, right? So now what do we do? In C5, we measure the MSB. We are measuring the K. So it will collapse, right? So you collapse to what? I don't know, maybe it's K0. Let me assume that it collapsed to K0. Is that okay? So then the function, when you collapse to K0, well, how does the function look like? You don't have the summation anymore, right, for the K. Because it is a superposition of K, you measure it, there's only one K left, and which is K0. So I have... I don't have K anymore. What do I have? I only have Y, thank you. And then K0, uh, X0. And then omega negative K0, Y. Right, Y is a natural number. And then R, I K0. 2n, f of x0, n. Is this okay? k0, x0 are constant, right? If this is a result of our measurement, right? So we can ignore it. So this is equal to summation y, omega negative k0, y, r. What is R, by the way? Do you remember? The period. Okay. Now, we are not going to derive it, but we start need to uh, look at this one. K0 and F of N, F of 0. These are also constant. They doesn't change, right? Because I measure it collapse to K0, right? And I measure it collapse to F of N0. These are constant states. Constant basis state, right? So it can be factorized out, nothing to do with Y. So the whole thing, the strength of this one is just talking the summation of omega negative K0 Y R. And what is omega? What is omega? Yeah. E to the power I to pi over what? N. What is the capital N here? Hmm? What is N? N means how many qubit, right? But omega, when did we get the omega? Do you remember? It came from what? Quantum Fourier transform. How many qubits do we have for quantum Fourier transform? 2n. So it is what? 2 to the power 2n, right? I think I'm right. And of course, I have negative because of the k. 0, Y, R, right? So I write, write a bet. Let me do a better job. This is Y e to the power negative I 2 pi K 0, Y, R. These are all integer. Period is integer. Y is integer, right? K 0 is integer. 2 to the power 2 N. Everything is integer, right? This means that I'm going to sum up some unity number along this circle with different y. Everything is the same, but the y is different. Y runs from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if your number n is large, 
It basically is a tons of points over here. And they can be everywhere. If you add them together, what do you get? Yeah, if everywhere you get destructive interference, if you do this uniformly, destructive interference, zero, right? Equal to zero if distribute uniformly. Well, so if this is the case, you are not going to get K0. You cannot measure that K0 that gives you uniform distribution. Only when under what situation would you get something? When it is constructive. It means when y equal to 0, you are here. y equal to 1, you are here also. y equal to 2, you are here also. y equal to 3, you are here also. But maybe you go through two circles, three circles, four circles, doesn't matter. But all of them are here. Then you get a strong signal. If k zero y, I mean, you have no y because y is the one that giving you how many circles. R divided by 2 to the power 2n equals a uh, integer. I just call it integer. Okay? It means this one, if it is an integer, right? Because I start with y equal to 0. And then y equal to 1, if this is integer, it gives me 2 pi. Right? Because this is an integer times 2 pi. Or maybe it is 2, give me 4 pi. Doesn't matter. The point is, every time I increase y, it go through the circle by a full circle or two circle. So it's always constructive interference. In this case, I will get K0. Okay? So as a result, what is R? R is equal to the integer times 2 to the power N to the power small 2N, maybe divided by k0. You are fighting for r, right? That is the period. You know k0, correct? Because this is what you measure. Because you did the measurement, you collapse to k0. The problem is, is you don't know what is p. Because p can be 1, can be 2, can be 3, can be 4. But it narrowed down a lot. It already narrowed down this a lot, and then I don't have the place to write. This is the last sentence I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, a different number. Okay, so sorry, then let me don't call it P. It's not compared to the P times here. This is a lowercase p. Okay, how about let's call it what do you want to call? How about B? <laughs> B. Okay. You still don't know, but you narrow down already. And then you will use the so-called continue fraction expression To narrow down, further narrow down. P. I mean B. I mean narrow down R, right? Because your goal is to find the R. You might still not get the answer. But however, that's not a problem. I can track easily. Correct? I say that 2 times 10 equal to 21. How can you prove that I'm wrong? Just time, multiply 2 by 10. So easy, very fast, right? Just one shot. Even a 100-digit number, 
do a multiplication is so easy in classical computer. You find it wrong, go back to it again. It's just the statistic tells you that even you get the wrong A, that does not satisfy the requirement. The A to the power out, R divided by two minus one uh, plus one is not, I forgot what is the criteria. Plus one is not equal to zero. You just go back to do it again. So Schwarz algorithm does not give you a definite answer. It narrowed down the period so that you have very high chance to find the correct period. And you can check it easily. You just do a multiplication. You find that it's right or wrong, right? If it's right, you get the answer. It's so easy to check whether something is a factor of the other one. Yeah? So yeah. we didn't get one value. You get multiple value, right? For example, here, I know the R is uh, in this range. And then I use something called continue uh, fraction expression. Uh, I can uh, expansion, sorry, not expression. I can further expansion, further narrow it down. Right, and then you can check the answer. So this is a very good example that to let you know that with just that you increase your chance to get it right. It's just like you want to fix a circuit, right? The circuit has stuck a zero fault. You can analyze it with the polynomial uh, MP time. It's very difficult. You also can guess, let me jump, maybe here, let me test, right? If you fail, then, then you know right away if, whether it fail or not, right? That if not, then you try another place. But now, because it is everywhere, uh, it's very difficult. You are not the super lucky people in the world, otherwise you got a lottery already, right? The fact you're still an engineer because we are not lucky enough to get the lottery, right? So that's why we need to come up with a way. Instead of checking every one of them, Good thing is the Schwarz algorithm let us narrow down, so the chance is very high. Okay. Okay. So that is what I want to talk about uh, Schwarz algorithm, and that's it. That's all about Schwarz algorithm.